Hi there, this is Ryan from m-boss.com and we're going to take a first look and peek at Apple's newly announced iBook author application. Uh, the first thing to note about it is to go ahead and get your copy because it is a free download. Apple wants to kind of get, get the ball rolling really quickly with this is to go to the App Store and it's probably on the home page at least for a little while but uh, other than that you can always search for iBooks author. Once the application is downloaded, all you simply do is go ahead and open the application up and you'll be presented with the chance to choose a template. Now I guess you can start from scratch and kind of build your own, but the templates that are in here right now seem to be focused strictly on the textbook market and have themes associated with that. We're going to start with just the editorial theme right now. And when we open it up, it's going to give us you know, the opportunity to kind of customize the book title and so forth. You can remove elements, select on elements, very much you know what you would expect from any kind of authoring application. And then you can go ahead and customize uh, any kind of intro media. You could have a, a movie play there for instance and so forth. And then a table of contents that you can start editing and adding to. But let's go ahead and look at the actual pages themselves. So in here, if we um, go ahead and add some elements, you can click on any of these, move any of these around, resize these, um, tell it to, to change clipping mask and so forth. And as you see, the biggest uh, improvement is that it's very intuitive to use. So you have your options for adding different shapes, elements, tables up at the top toolbar. And of course, just like other iPhoto, iMovie, you have the built-in integration between those apps up here where you can go grab extra media. The thing that I want to focus on is the widget applications. So if we want a gallery widget for instance, we can go ahead and add that to this particular page. I want to actually just put it in one of the left hand sides of the page. And then we can add a couple photos and pictures to this. Now unfortunately for this particular uh, gallery widget, you can only add a picture at a time. You can't shift select or make multiple selections to grab each photo. So that's a bit of a limitation, but that currently seems to be how it's designed. So I'm going to grab uh, you know, three photos or so, so that we can look and see what they look like later uh, once we preview it in the iPad. So very easy to do. You can also change some uh, other things about having uh, a, a margin or so or not, and the caption and so forth. Some other widgets that are quite handy is the ability to add uh, a movie. So if we just drag it over to the other side of the page, kind of get it squared and centered up with the other content that we had over there, you can go to the Media Explorer and bring in some movies that you had done and just drag and drop. So we'll grab a movie that I previously made. And let's go to the next page. You'll notice that as you move any of the uh, content around pictures, photos, any of the widgets, that the text automatically reflows. So that's pretty good for any novice, you know, that's not used to a design application like InDesign or or Quark or so on. The other thing uh, that we'll add is a 3D image. This can be kind of neat. This works off of uh, basically 3D renderings that are in the uh, Kelowna 3D file format. So when you go to uh, uh, search for that online, you'll notice that Google keeps a collection of those from its SketchUp uh, kind of online archive. And uh, I downloaded a couple to try them out. And the file format you're looking at is .dae. Now with this though, there's a bit of trial and error because one, a lot of the ones online were a bit too complex for it to actually render here so far. But I did find this one that has a, um, a basically a rendering of a chair. Very simple, not too many textures and so on. So that can be kind of useful to kind of get some 3D modeling uh, very quickly inside your image. The other thing that you can do is also add an interactive image. So this could be where you could grab any particular photo. So let's go uh, get this photo that I had on the desktop here. And we'll just drag it over here. drag and drop where you can actually highlight and move around different objects so you'll notice that it'll zoom in and zoom out kind of a thing to where you can click in and edit each one 
So if we want to, we can go in here, give it a little bit of text and so on. And then that's going to be able to uh, zoom in and navigate to the different points. So you could kind of, you know, spot out and highlight different parts of a particular image just to make it a little bit more interactive for you. Another couple things about this, once you kind of get your text in there, you get all your different uh, graphical elements and things. Um, another neat thing that's, that's useful for, you know, any kind of instruction like a textbook would be is that there are also widgets in here to go ahead and add some review or kind of challenges after a uh, section reviews in other words so we can come in here and kind of have a Q&A for what we just were supposed to have learned so you can add those kind of elements in there too once you get it how you want it there's a couple of options as far as distributing it uh, Apple would prefer that you have an account with the store to go ahead and upload to and of course set any kind of pricing so where and I think they're still keeping the same split as before a 70 30 split 30 percent split so Apple takes 30 percent you get the remaining uh, portion from that or you can export in a couple different formats from here so you can export as an iBook format which means that uh, you have to distribute that and then the, the end user who wants to have it on their iPad has to manually sync that through iTunes or you can export as a PDF in some very basic settings here, good, better, best, and then also it can be password uh, protected in certain uh, ways. And you can export just as a raw text file. The other thing that's nice here, but that again is kind of in Apple's advantage, is that you can preview your book once you kind of have it laid out how you want it. Now to do this though, you have to have your iPad connected to the computer that you're working on with the iBook author application and once you click preview here it's literally going to render this and push it to um, the iBook store or, or, or iBooks on your iPad and it'll come up with a little icon in the bookstore to, that says proof on it and then you can open it up and interact with it uh, from that point on so we'll kind of take a look at another video hopefully um, of how it looks on the iPad once it's rendered because it is pretty neat going forward though um, Textbooks, uh, of course, the publishers are into this. I doubt they're using this tool to do that with, but uh, it could be an interesting play for the consumer space, too, as far as a lot of DIY and self-publishing is concerned. So that's the first take on Apple's iBooks author.